Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do something really cool. I've got a three-part series for you on data cleansing and exploratory data analysis. We're going to do part one, initial data cleansing. Then we're going to do part two, we're going to do some graphing and explore the data and look for some insights. And then part three, we're going to wrap it up and bring it all together. Look at the insights, look at you know conclusions, recommendations, typical stuff you would do in a uh, data science or data analysis uh, research uh, task. Um, so basically here, the data set that I'm using is the selfie related injuries data set, which can easily be available or gotten online. Um, so let's go through this. And this is in Python, obviously, and we're using Jupyter Notebooks here. Okay. So if you don't know, this is, uh, uh, different types of, uh, markup and, uh, I've used in here. Okay. Along with this, you can do that yourself. You just go into the cell and cell type markdown, sorry, markdown, not markup, and uh, code. So you can do that and look at these things. But um, anyway, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to install the necessary libraries, right? And uh, we have to start with that without libraries, can't do anything. So what we do is we import pandas, numpy, matplotlib, matplotlib dot pyplot. Um, and the, that's the one we do a little different. We have to add this little bit of percent matplotlib in line because we want to see it in line. We want to see the graphs in line later on. Seaborn is SNS. Uh, plotly dot graph objects is go. And keep in mind, these are not all going to be used in this first video, but they're going to be used in the second and third videos also. So um, import folium, import plotly dot express is PX and import OS. We're going to use those. If you don't have one of these files, just use this, pip install, and then whatever it is. So exclamation mark, space, pip3, space, install, space, and then the name of that uh, uh, library. And then, of course, you have to do another line for to import it. Once you've installed it, that's not everything. you got to import it, too. See that? Okay, and I've commented those out with little uh, number signs in front of them. Okay, so once you have the libraries installed, again, it's pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, seaborn, folium, plotly.express, and os. Once you've got those installed, then we're going to go get the selfie-related injuries data. It's not a very complex data set, so I've got a couple of columns. And um, go and get it online, just look it up, selfie-related injuries data or data set. Once you have it, it's a CSV, you're just going to load it up with your pandas uh, library, pd.read underscore CSV, and then you put in exactly where location is on your uh, computer. Okay, so it's going to be, you know, wherever from your desktop probably and folders from there. Okay, and that's how you do that. I put it into a data frame called DF right here, and then I put df.head4. That gives me the head, the top four rows right here below. You can see that. So right here you see that I have, this is what's great about Jupyter Notebooks. It makes it so simple to read and see your data and interact with it and everything and part through it and document stuff. It's so great for that. Anyway, so when I do four, what that does, it gives, starts at zero. So it's like an array. It starts at zero, then one, two, and three. That's four, the first four rows. It starts with zero. And you see here you've got eight country, injuries, casualties. That's the same column there. Type and description. So your type is going to be how did they die? electrocution, transport, did they all die? I don't know, but that's what it tells you there. Descriptions, what happened, three teenagers, a 20-year-old man, and so on and so forth. Date and the country. And here is the formats of everything here. Now, what we're next going to do is, let's say, there could be some nulls in here. There could be some not a number uh, entries in here, so we need to look at that. So what we want to do is we want to take that data frame, put dot .info and parentheses, right? So we're just going to do that right here. When we do that, we get this right here. See this? Look at this. It tells you how many entries you have in each column, right? So date we saw was right here, right? So I have 193 in date. In country, I have 192. Injuries and casualties, I have 192. Type, I have 193. Description, I have 193. That tells me that I have a problem with these two, country and injuries and casualties. So that means this is probably a null in there, a blank or something like that. So now that we've seen that, we don't know where it is, right? So let's go a little bit further. It shows we have a discrepancy between the date, time, and description columns. As we said, 193 entries versus country and injuries, casualties, where they have 192 entries. That tells us we have missing data there in holes. And uh, in the table, or in the below table where I put df tail, we start to see that. So I've got df.tail, 
And, and the surprise is instead of leaving it blank, I put four. By putting it blank, it goes to the default of the tail or the head, which is usually six. I put four, I only need four rows. And here's the last tail, unlike head, gives me the last four rows. Head gives me the first four rows. So when you look at this, India, Italy, Hungary, NAN. 11, 1, 1, NAN. So there it is right there. There's our problem, row 192. We have animal, shark attack. We have a date, but we do not have a country or injuries, casualties. So we don't know what it is. We just know animal and shark attack. So when we use, when we deal with NAs, nulls, we have to determine how we want to deal with them. Do we want to remove the data forever? Probably not. So if you see, I can use drop NA, which removes it. Do you notice this, DF1? Our data frame was called DF. Switch it to DF1, so I keep DF, which has that row in it. DF1, I'm using DF.DropNA, I'm removing that, um, because we do not know the country or the number of injuries, casualties, so in essence, I really can't use that uh, down below when I go deeper into an exploratory data analysis. I could, but I, I'm, in this case, I'm removing it. So data frame one is not data frame. It's it's a data frame, but it's not the original data frame up here. So now I have data frame one. So the new one has it dropped. The old one has it still there. Then if I go to df1.tail4, see that right here? That gives me the last four, and that row is gone, 192. We're now stopping at 191. See that? So the nulls are gone. We don't have them anymore. Nulls can cause you issues when you're trying to plot time series and other things. So we want to kind of avoid that for this. It, it's missing the country and injuries casually. So, you know, what can we really infer from that other than maybe type? Um, so next, in the next video, we're going to go into the exploratory data analysis. Where we're looking for some amazing additional insights on this data, which is really cool. We're going to do some really cool stuff, some really cool graphs. And I'll give you a little hit, you know, heads up on what's coming. And uh, we're going to really see some spikes and some other things, some outliers. We're going to identify some really cool stuff. So stay tuned and watch for ep or, uh, video two of this series. And then video three, we'll bring it all together for you, show you the insights, where we should go with it, and everything else. Thanks again for watching. Please watch episode two or video two and have a great day. Thank you.